Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 9 on Fargo CW. Law enforcement sources are saying the FBI now has a search warrant to read emails found on the laptop of Hillary Clinton's top aide and her husband. Investigators will now work to determine if they are pertinent to the investigation into Clinton's private email server. Brooks Silver Braga reports the two campaigns are offering sharply different views on what the developments mean. Well, my friends, just nine days left until November the 8th. At a Florida rally Sunday, Hillary Clinton avoided talking directly about the FBI announcement it is reviewing new information tied to her private server. There's a lot of noise and distraction. A new CBS survey of likely voters finds more than 70% of those polled say the new information won't change their thinking or they've already voted. More than 1,000 emails, some work-related, were found on a laptop shared by Clinton aide Huma Abedin and her estranged husband Anthony Weiner during an investigation into him allegedly sending lewd messages to a minor. Sources tell CBS News Abedin says she didn't know her emails were on the laptop. The FBI is now reviewing Abedin's emails. We never thought we were going to say thank you to Anthony Weiner. Donald Trump is calling it the biggest political scandal since Watergate. We have one ultimate check on Hillary's corruption, and that is the power of the vote. An ABC Washington Post poll finds Clinton's lead has shrunk to one point nationally. But Trump is struggling in some key states. The latest CBS News battleground tracker has him up just two points in Republican-friendly Arizona and trailing in Colorado, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania. Officials also say investigators found the emails in question earlier this month, but only revealed them to FBI Director James Comey on Thursday, one day before he alerted Congress. And taking a look at weather, here's a live look outside. We got mainly cloudy skies out there, and the clouds did keep temperatures down as we went through the day. A high of only 44 in the Fargo area, but the clouds will keep us mild as we go through the evening. 42 right now in Fargo. Wind from the south-southeast getting a little breezy out there at 14 miles per hour. Moorhead holding at 39 degrees and out toward Grand Forks at 41 under mainly cloudy skies. Other temperatures show we're at 39 Langdon, Devils Lake, Jamestown, and Valley City. Also at 39 to Detroit Lakes and Fergus Falls with temperatures out toward Roseau and Bedette into the mid to upper 30s. And that wind mainly from the south between 10 and 20 miles per hour with higher gusts across the region. And we should see temperatures under the clouds and with that uh, wind start to rise as we go through the overnight period. Mainly cloudy skies across the region, a few sprinkles north of the Canadian border. And that's basically it for the moisture. We have this warm front making its way through. High pressure is working its way out and we have that flow from the south that will we'll be become strong as we go through the overnight period. This low will move off to the north and we will definitely be into the warm sector as we go uh, through the overnight period and through the day on Monday. Temperatures staying into the low to mid 40s during the overnight period. Plenty of cloud cover and it will be a little breezy with that wind from the south. That low does move to our north and most of the rain showers do stay to our north as we go through the day tomorrow and we are mild with temperatures getting into the upper 50s to upper 60s depending on where you are. Fargo sees temperatures into the upper 60s as we go throughout the day. Partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies out there with the warmest air staying in the southern portion of the valley. And as we go through the evening, trick-or-treating time, uh, temperatures around 5 p.m. could be into the mid-60s, partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies with temperatures falling back through the upper 50s as we go through the evening. And then for the day on Tuesday, we will see temperatures uh, not as warm as Monday, but not that bad for this time of year into the mid to upper 50s with partly cloudy skies out there. As we go through the day on Wednesday, we are back into the upper 50s, upper 50s for the uh, day on Thursday and Friday, mainly sunny skies. And next weekend, not bad, 62, way above normal for the day on Saturday, still with plenty of sunshine. So this is pretty average. I know 67 seems kind of high, but the mm -hmm. rest of the week, you know, the highs in the 50s and the lows in the 30s and 40s. You know, we should be into the mid to upper 40s this time of year, so we are well above normal. I think we're getting used to the really warm air. I won't complain about that. No, nope, not. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Justin. Yeah. Everybody thinks that, you know, boy, you know, it's not going to happen to me, but uh, unfortunately it does. And these are crimes of opportunity. 
almost 400 vehicles have been broken into since the beginning of this year in Fargo. And with that number increasing almost every day, we bring you this story to spread some awareness and hopefully prevent you from becoming a victim. Car thieves and, and, and those that are out burglarizing garages and cars, look for that quick grab, look for that quick piece of property or that purse or wallet or electronics in the vehicle. Lindsay O'Driscoll learned this the hard way. I accidentally left my um, purse in the car, which I didn't think anything of it. It was an honest mistake. And then I woke up the next morning and came out to my car to my whole passenger window shattered. And a hammer was sitting in the front seat and my whole purse was taken. And now someone out there has a lot of O'Driscoll's information. My whole wallet, which had like my debit and credit cards my license, my social security card because I was applying for new jobs, unfortunately. Sergeant Kevin Pallas with Fargo Police yes. says you should do the following if you don't want someone trying to break into your car. You can't or you shouldn't leave valuables in your vehicle and, and you should always lock up your vehicles. And if you have an opportunity to park it in an area that's well lit or if you have the availability of a garage to please you so. Along with doing those things, talking to your neighbors may offer some protection. It would have helped O'Driscoll in this case. I recently have came talking to my neighbors that it's happened to them a few times, which they feel awful for not telling all the neighbors and warning them. A warning like that can be posted to the site next door. It's something police across the valley are recommending to keep your neighborhood as safe as possible. We encourage those that uh, haven't gone to that site next door to do that and uh, look us up and, and get signed up for your neighborhood. O'Driscoll says she's going to be more careful now and she's telling everyone where she lives about the incident so hopefully no one else has to go through what she's going through. If you need help uncovering fraud and corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline at 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Fire crews responded to a large fire in rural Morton County about 1 a.m. Sunday morning. The flames are on private property west of the Backwater Bridge. That's near the site of the Dakota Access Pipeline protest camps. According to authorities, the terrain prevented, to, prevented the Mandan Rural Fire Department from reaching the fire. At about 8.45, the National Guard took two UH-60 Black Hawk hel helicopters with 600 gallons water buckets to put out the fire. The helicopter crews extinguished the fire with no damage to infrastructure. A spokesperson says the Morton County Sheriff's Department is investigating and will ask for assistance from the state fire marshal. In Fargo today, people stood in solidarity with Standing Rock, braving the cool weather to show their opposition to the Dakota Access Pipeline. The group, comprised of people from all backgrounds, marched around downtown Fargo, carrying signs showing their disapproval of the controversial project. Law enforcement tell us that they will keep a presence near the construction site as long as protesters are there. A man died when his pickup truck collided with a semi in central Minnesota this morning. The state patrol says the crash happened shortly after 9 a.m. at the intersection of Highway 71 and 380th Street in Wadena County, just north of Eagle Bend. A Dodge Dakota pickup was heading east on 380th Street when it collided with a semi heading north on the highway. The driver of the pickup was 58-year-old Jeffrey Arendt from Eagle Bend. The semi-driver didn't suffer any noticeable injuries. What led to the crash is still being investigated. Remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook. You can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. A new study says North Dakota is the state with the most startup companies in the nation. The Kauffman Index for Growth Entrepreneurship found that North Dakota is home to 245 new business startups for every 100,000 residents, which is the strongest startup activity across the country. We spoke with a startup specializing in nonprofit marketing called Tell Well for Good, which works out of Perry Den in downtown Fargo, about these stats. The idea that you need to get a job. Um, wherever you can and settle down for the next 40 years of your life until you retire is slowly being debunked as like that's maybe not you know the best way to use your talents and your passions um, so yeah that's that's how Tello came about as well as just three people who were like well what do we really want to do we want to tell stories for more information about this new startup study and the startup company tell well for good head over to valleynewslive.com and click on this story 
We're coming up on a special anniversary. 30 years ago in December, a five-month-old boy in California received a heart transplant that saved his life. The heart came from a little boy here in Fargo, and tomorrow night, Valley News Team's Mike Morgan looks back at the amazing life-saving effort that continues to pay dividends today. He's here with a preview. This past summer marked the 30th birthday for Andrew De La Pena. He's lived quite a life since successfully receiving the heart, but it wasn't a sure thing that he'd get it on time. The Lear jet that was supposed to quickly take the heart from Fargo to California wouldn't start on that fateful day in December. A local doctor called Governor George Sinner, who then called the North Dakota Air National Guard. At that time, as part of their mission, they had an F-4 jet on call 24-7. My story details what happened. You'll hear from former Governor Sinner and the pilot on that life-saving mission, now Brigadier General Bob Beckland. I'll also visit with Andrew, who's certainly making the most of life. Find out about his approach every day. As Governor Sinner put it, he's doing the things you'd hope he'd be doing, and that's pretty good reward. Mike Morkin, Valley News Live. Look for Mike's story tomorrow night on Valley News Live at 9 on The CW and Valley News Live 10 at 10. Still ahead tonight, is Moorhead turning into a buyer's market for housing? We've got those details next.